Okay, we're going to work on 6.4, simplifying radical expressions, some rules that go along with it, and how to, how to know when you're done simplifying. First of all, um, the radical, often referred to as the square root. Remember, it's only a square root when uh, there's not another number lift, listed there. There is a little 2 sitting there. You just, uh, they don't really, you don't write it. It's kind of like 10 to the first power. You don't write the first power. Also, what's underneath the radical is called the radicand. So just a couple of terms there uh, as we move forward. Um, square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is 10. You can multiply square roots. Remember, the square root of 100 is equal to 10. Um, so when you multiply a square root times itself, it is undone. Uh, square numbers and cube numbers, you want to keep track of um, perfect squares. Um, so your square numbers are going to be, uh, you know, one, one squared is, is one, two squared is four, three squared, four, five, six, seven, eight, or eight, <laughs> nine, ten. Uh, some people know 11, a lot of people know 12, some know 13, maybe you don't. 14 is 196, 15 is 225. You should probably know 1 through 12. You'll know some others on accident. Uh, 20 squared is 400, and so on and so forth. Cube numbers, the only ones we're going to really keep track of are, are uh, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125. That's raising something to the third power. So, you know, you've got the square root of 100 is equal to 10. The cube root of 27 is equal to 3. A square root means what number was multiplied by itself in order to get 100. A cube root means what number was multiplied by itself three times in order to get um, the number that is the radicand. <coughs> Simplest radical form. We are looking for radicands that have, um, you, could, you have to be, have, Perfect square factors uh, need to all be eliminated, so all of the factors um, um, can't be uh, uh, can't have the square root of 12 because the square root of 4 is a is a is a perfect square. Can't have fractions underneath the radical sign. Uh, you can't have radicals in the denominator. So we will we'll talk about that. Um, when we're talking about multiplying, you're allowed to multiply and you're allowed to take things apart. So this could have started as the square root of 56, which is equal to the square root of 8 times the square root of 7. You're allowed to split them up. Um, and then we could go a step further into 4 and 2 and 7. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8 times 7 is 56. So how would I write this? I would write it 2. And then I have a square root 2 and a square root 7. There are no perfect square factors in 2 and 7. So we would put them back together. And we would get um, square root of 14. Uh, the fastest way to do this one would have been to split it into 4 and 14. And then we get 2 and 14. If I was going to simplify these, 52, 52 is square root 4 times the square root of 13, which is 2 root 13. Now I know I'm done. Square root of 32, you want to get the biggest one if you can. If you, if you can recognize 16 in there, that's the best way to go. 4 root 2, 200 is 100 times 2. That's 10 root 2. And there you go. You can always check your answer. Again, we're looking for exact values. These are irrational numbers underneath the radicals. So we do not want a decimal, um, rounded decimal. Your calculator will do the square root of 52. It'll be 7.2 or something like that. Um, but that's an irrational number. So we're looking for simplifying to exact values. No decimals in our answers. Let's look at these ones. Um, I like to take them apart rather than put them back together. 
square root of 35 is square root 7 times the square root of 5. That's 35, those two together, right? And then multiplied by another square root 5. Remember, when a square root is multiplied by itself, it gets set free. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. The answer here is 5 root 7, and we're done. 15 and 3, I would do square root 5, square root 3. That's 15. Multiply another square root of 3 on. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3. It gets set free. It's the square root of 9, which is 3 root 5. And there's your answer. Down here, I got a 3 and a 5, so I would do, uh, I would do 2, 5, and 3. That's 30 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. Now watch what happens. I've got 3 times 3. That's 3. I've got 5 times 5. Square root of 5 times That's 5. And this is left. Square root of 3 times... So I get 15 root 2. Um, we're gonna we're gonna glance over this guy. We're not gonna worry about the um, absolute value. Okay. Whoa. Here we go. We're gonna start with uh, with I'm gonna do the 80 first. So I like to separate these things out. 80 perfect square factor of 80. Again, if you can find the largest perfect square factor, that's great. So I get 16 times 5. And now I want evens because the square root of x to the fourth, what was mult is actually x squared. What was squared in order to get that? Well, x squared was squared. Okay. So I want evens. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to, whoops, that's going to be times square root x to the fourth. And then my y to the fifth, I'm going to change it into four of them and one of them. And my z cubed, two of them and one of them. Okay, now let's get all our perfect squares out. Four, x squared, y squared, z. What's left over? Still underneath a radical, that guy that guy and that guy. Square root 5 y z. So we get the perfect squares separated out. So whenever we have an odd number I want to change it into 4 and 1. I want to take 1 away. And the 1 remained underneath there and we remained underneath there. 45 will be 9 and 5, a to the 4th, b squared, b, c to the 6th. Get all the perfect squares out. Here we go. I got a 3. That one's done. I got an a squared. Comes out of there. I got a b comes out of there. I got a c cubed. Comes out of there. What's left? 5b underneath the radical. There it is. Good times, huh? Good times. You try. Here we go. 56. Perfect square factor of 56. What the heck goes into 56? Is it 14 times 4? Oh, we did that one already. 4, 14, m squared, n to the fourth. I got to change the p to a 4 and the p to the fifth. This is p to the fifth. Four of them and one of them is five of them. Now I take them apart and I will get a 2 done there, m done there, n squared done there, p squared done there. What's under the radical? 14p. Good times, huh? 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 108. 108. Perfect square of 108 is going to be, well, it's got to be divisible by 4 for sure, huh? Actually, I think it's 36. What's 108 divided by 36? Because 9 is going to go in there. So it's going to be 36 and 3. If you don't get it on the first try, you can always get it get it after a little time. So I get 36 times 3, and then I have a x to the 6th, and a y to the 4th, and I'm going to change z into z to the 4th and z to the 1. And I get 6 x cubed, y squared, z squared, square root 3z. Uz? Easy. All right. Uh, last ones here. First one, um, these first two I think are pretty simple. You're taking the whole thing to the eighth power, which means we're kind of just and this negative is just out front, and they're going to have some in your in your homework. They're going to have plus or minus out front. You just it just comes along for the ride. And when you take the eighth root or uh, square root, it means it's just cutting that exponent in half. Remember, uh, x uh, square root just means to the power of one half. And this one's the same thing. It's just this whole thing is raised to the second. And now what we do need to understand is what what do we multiply together? Five times. This is fifth root of 243. What's multiplied together five times to give you 243? You can do 243 to the one fifth in your in your calculator, and you're going to get, um, I think you get three. Pretty sure. And then uh, if this is being uh, cut into fifths, so it's 15 divided by five essentially, we get x plus two cubed. Okay. So it's kind of like uh, cube root is what, what's multiplied together three times. And then fifth root would be what's multiplied together five times. And you can check those on your calculator. Also, you can take an odd root of a negative. That does work. So you're going to want to watch that on the old homework assignment. Best of luck. Safe travels. Peace out.